You serve your master well. And you will be rewarded. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. We're in the plan, folks, which is my weekly show about the various things that are going on in the hollow tables, and this has been quite the week for new stuff. The community is in an uproar. A lot of people are very positive and excited about the new things from the new road ahead. A lot of people are very concerned and frustrated and angsty about it, and I'm probably in the middle somewhere, as you might imagine. <laughs> or you might not imagine. You, you might not be an imaginative sort, if we're just being honest. So, instead of fixating on your lack of imagination, why don't we fixate on your lack of mounting the algorithm up to this point, folks? Please help like, subscribe, and or comment. Maybe all three. Maybe. <laughs> why not both? <laughs> Uh, you don't know what I'm talking about because I don't either, but we've got the mal the algorithm and the algorithm to mount <laughs> the, the algorithm to out folks. We've got we've got to do it We've got to get this channel up and running or Continuing to run or maybe running for the first time. That would be great that being said, let's let's jump in. We've <laughs> for so this is gonna re this is obviously not this isn't Galaxy of Heroes related really, but this is an interesting thing. On on May the fourth, Disney is going to be releasing a couple different things. First off, they'll be doing the Legacy or the Legacy the the Legend. Now oh, I forget what it's called. Hold on. Ah, <laughs> don't don't mind me, folks. It's Visions. Visions 2, Season 2, which is all of the Star Wars animated stuff, or sorry, anime stuff, which I, I just, man, I tried to get into. I liked, I was like, man, I'm gonna go into this with an open mind. May, I have a lot of friends who like anime. I might actually like this, and I just didn't, and I had to stop because it was annoying me too much, and I didn't like it, and I'm sorry to everyone who loves anime and is uh, therefore disappointed in me and my closed-mindedness. I was very open <clears throat> to potentially liking it. And I did not. So, Visions 2, don't care about Young Jedi Adventures. I I, I don't care about it for me, really. Uh, excuse me. So, <laughs> had to pause there to cough. Because it's fun to cough. Just good to take a quick coughing break every once in a while. <laughs> Hopefully you don't cough all the way to your coffin. Oh man, that was dark. Anyways, the Young Jedi Adventures thing looks kind of cutesy, I guess. The the thing is, I, I don't think I'd watch this on my own. I mean, it's it's all it's all tuned for a very young audience. I do have a kid who is five years old, and I think he might be convinced to enjoy it. And I therefore, I'm a little bit excited about that. It's coming out in May on May 4th as well, and we, at the very least, we get to see Goblin Yoda, and that that ain't bad. I don't know why I shared that with you, except, uh, I mean, I'm excited about Star Wars in general, and I, I'm thinking at some point, folks, I think we're going to be start, starting to pay more attention to the greater Star Wars universe on this channel. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I do want to kind of get in the habit of start talking about more generalized Star Wars news, because I have a lot to say about Star Wars, I've discovered, uh, in general. I'm, I'm big on the lore, and I'm big on, uh, you know, all the different aspects of it as well. A lot, Lots and lots of cool stuff involving Star Wars coming down the road that's, and stuff that's already been here. And I've, I've mostly soaked up most of it. That's why I don't have a good memory, folks, because it's all stuffed with extraneous Star Wars nonsense. That being said, let's talk about Galaxy of Heroes, shall we? So, alright, this, this was a recent bug that came out. This was funny to me, actually. Uh, my our, our friend Potato told... Uh, pointed it out, and one, once he said it, I was like, "Man, I can't unsee this now." Uh, if you if you read this closely, so that there was a there was a bug where where things weren't dispelling things. Like they they were trying to f they tried to fix a bug where Ahsoka was only dispelling 100 stacks of of buffs, which seems like enough. Except there's there's a datacron out there that Lord Vader can get more than 100 stacks of protection up, making him like so impossible to kill that it's almost laughable. The, the thing about it is, Ahsoka wasn't dispelling all of those, she was just dispelling a hundred, so they tried to fix that, and in return, they, they 
broke a lot of different things, including Millennium Falcons, Dispel on Basic, lots of other stuff. And the thing that, that makes me laugh about this is they don't tell us what the bug was in this. They just say they're aware of and looking at an issue with Millennium Falcon. Here are other characters that are affected by the issue, by an issue. Like it, it they don't, they're not, they don't tell us what's going on. And you know, it, it makes sense once you understand that it's about dispelling things and whatever. I'm glad they told us about it. It just did make me chuckle. I was like, oh, like what? <laughs> I, I would go to the, uh, you know, they're having, they're having issues with the Falcon and Chief Nebit. I mean, you could really kind of make it a fun trivia thing. Like, what what do all these characters, including the Tarenta Tech, or however the hell you spell it, or pronounce it, <laughs> or both, uh, what do they all have in common? It could be kind of a fun, like, puzzle, maybe. <laughs> Narrator. <laughs> it wasn't. However... That this leads to a kind of slightly bigger issue, folks, and this is this is me kind of cherry picking, honestly. So five of the last seven uh, updates on their developer thing, like on, on their announcements, are bugs, known issue, like Tie Defender, known issue, third sister special mission, like all these different things that are going wrong with the game. Five out of the last seven, which is also, I should point out, folks, five of seven is me making it, like me manipulating numbers in, like, kind of my rhetorical favor. If I wanted to, like, it, it's also equally accurate to say five of the last eight are this, because the one right before this was, like, a calendar update or something like that. So, uh, like, me saying five of seven, it's not as, it, it's, it's me being a little bit rhetorical here, but... I just, I mean, people are frustrated right now with the quality of the game in terms of the, the product that is being released, and I guess I can understand the frustration here. Uh, at the same time, I mean, a lot of this stuff was already kind of known about, and I mean, it's good that they're they're communicating it, right? Like, there, there are a lot of bugs out there, and a lot of weird stuff that they're just not acknowledging, like the squish, though... I have heard some interesting things about that. We're not actually going to talk about the population of the game this time, even though I kind of promised to last time, uh, just because there's some things that are happening behind the scenes that I, I heard about from something and somewhere and whatever, whatnot. But I, I'm very interested to see how that goes. And we'll be tracking that, and once, once it's actual official news, we'll talk about it. So sorry to be all vague, but this... The 5 of 7, it does, it feels a little discouraging. There's a lot of games out there who don't have these crazy huge bugs out that, that, that are there when they're released. I think some of it's just the age of the game and the foundation of spaghetti nonsense code that they just can't, that they just can't escape. Like, and we, we don't want them to make a new game like Galaxy of Heroes 2. <laughs> don't don't worry about porting your new your old account into this one <laughs> because you can't. All right, let's let's turn a little bit. Let's swivel a little bit and talk about the raid. And we can't talk about every element of the road ahead, guys. There's just just too much, and there's there's too much to come as well. And I, I will say this: there's so much we that they told us, and there's so much we don't know. They've already said they're going to give us more information, and they've done a pretty good job. Whenever they've iterated the the information that they've produced for us for things uh that that has turned out well if you look at like the new territory battle release yeah there's been a few surprises that were kind of nasty but for the most part the rollout was fairly smooth by telling us like hey here's some more about the raid a month or two later here's some more about the raid or i keep saying raid but about the territory battle the you know here's a little bit more and they, they kind of just released more and more information and once it finally was released we're like oh cool this is basically what to expect but what we don't want of course is is with like something that's just dropped in our laps like datacrons where I think that if they had iterated it at, at least some people were just doomed to not enjoy datacrons I, I think I mean that that's just that's the truth though I think that people would have bought into them a lot more if they had actually just kind of said like hey we produced some new things that are like new mods for your whole squad like squad mods instead of their own thing and just dropped in our lap like hot coffee and we're 
were a lot of like, ooh, ouch, and some people were like, ooh, it actually feels kind of good. But, I mean, some people liked it, some people hated it, and it was so off-putting though because it was so abrupt, and if they can just give us more information as things come out and develop, that's awesome. As opposed to like the Grand Inquisitor event as well. Like they gave us, they were like, hey, here's like five months warning. We didn't know it was five months warning, but you know, that, that event was they were like, hey, Grand Inquisitor's coming at the end of all these Inquisition characters. Uh, and then they didn't like give us more information. They're like, oh yeah, it'll be soon. It'll be, you know, like it'll be in the next couple months. It was just like, yep, you'll get that event at one point someday. Like hurry up and yeah, hurry up and wail on things. Oh, you wailed on things? You didn't. <laughs> You didn't have to, you could have just farmed most of that crap. Uh, anyways, I, I do like that they're releasing more raid information for us. Uh, uh, the, they's already said that they're going to give us more information in April, so, uh, you know, I think we, we do the wait and see thing, and I piss people off by suggesting that we possibly could wait and see before we react really super negatively about all this stuff. I do like the idea though, folks, one of the, uh, one of the things I do like in this is that they're going to reduce the number of factions total that we can actually use in the raid, and uh, that makes it more thematic, and it, it also just it reduces the number of possible squads I could use. It reduces the number, uh, the amount of theory craft that we're gonna have to do as well. At least to some, the at least it's gonna focus it, and we won't have. We don't have as many really dumb combos. I'm very interested to see how this all plays out and what the required relic levels are going to be for the various prize tiers. That that's one of the question marks that we're gonna have. But uh, this seems this seems good. I like this change about raids. I've, and to be clear, I don't I don't love raids personally. Like I I will help my guild do them, and if the rewards are amazing, I guess I'll participate more and more. But Raids have never been my area of focus, as you probably well know at this point, and I hope that I really enjoy this new format because, man, <laughs> I'm just not, I'm not looking forward to them, but I am trying to keep an open mind about maybe it'll actually be good. Now, one of the things that is amazing, and I, the format of this is a little bit sketch, I apologize for that, but the prestigious quest, you can see I copied it, I, I missed it entirely until someone in my comments mentioned it. They said that they're changing things for the prestigious quests, which is, uh, which is really amazing, the stuff that's specific to territory battles, which, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys can squint to see this, I can't really see it on the screen that I'm reading, but but uh, there's, there's one that I'm stuck on, the Fulcrum Quest, which, I mean, you don't get good rewards for this, but they're fun to get, to kind of passively work on them. But uh, you can see that, uh, like, I have to go back to Hoth if I want to get this Rogue One territory mission. And I thought it was an interesting thing to just, like, hide out in the middle of all of the raid information because this is, uh, this is more specific to territory battles. But I do like that they're going to change that because I can't go back to Hoth without missing a full territory battle and that, that's, I'm going to miss out on rewards. So that, that's a, that's a nice little, I don't know, change to me that there's something that has, that's always frustrated me. Like, okay, you can't get farther than this on that, on the, the missions. Now, Kelkest is nice. It look, looks like, okay, so there's gonna be two different versions of them, and this is something that I've legitimately heard the, the a lot of people in the community say, that they want to get, for, they, they want to get their pitchforks out, and uh, be, because Cal Kestis is not going to be a Jedi, and I can understand why you would think that, I, I just want to point this out, just to help you not have to get out your pitchfork for this. You can find, get out your pitchfork for something else, damn it. They look... <laughs> the other other bigger creatures would just call them forks, probably, uh, is my guess. But uh, So there's going to be two versions of Cal Kestis. One is probably going to be a marquee character, I, I think. I don't know if they explicitly said that, but that one's going to be an unaligned force user. That one's going to be the awkward, gangly youth that we see in the game. And then uh, eventually he's going to get his hero's journey version. That's the one that we're going to unlock. And he, uh, I mean, I guess we don't know for sure if he's a Jedi, but I mean, they did say it. Gosh, and I didn't even pay, paste it anywhere here, but that there is a thing that says that he, his survivor version is going to go well with 
other Jedi in PvP. Like, I think it's been pretty explicit, as if you read a little bit more closely. I can understand if you just kind of skimmed it, why you'd think that, but just wanted to point that out for people who are getting angsty about that. I think that that is fairly certain that he's going to be a Jedi in his final form, and then an unaligned force user, I mean, hey, we could potentially use him, uh, maybe he'd be good on Starkiller, he's gonna be a healer at the very least. Should be interesting to see how that all goes. Now, one thing that I don't love right now, and this is gonna lead to a greater theme, I think, but the idea that on Baraka we're going to just get a totally new just fight, it looks like. Something that re that's required for uh, for Seer Junda, because I don't know if I said that name right, and Cal Kestis to be on, and I, I'm, I'm not really against them, like, forcing characters on certain nodes in territory battles. What I don't like, what I do find objectionable is we're already spending a lot of time in territory battles. We're spending a demonstrably larger time in territory battles right now than we are in... Uh, than we were in on Geonosis, like that, just because it's a day-to-day -day thing. And I guess if you're not like able to participate that much in later days, it doesn't take as long. But but for the people who are actually like, you'll eventually get to that point where you have enough uh, relics six, relic seven, relic eight characters that you can actually participate every single day. And it's exhausting. It's a lot of time and effort. And they're just adding, so they're gonna add like a new node, uh, whatever, a bonus zone is what they're calling it. I guess they keep calling it kind of slightly different things, but a bonus zone. I don't know if the bonus zone is going to be in addition to, like, it kind of sounds, but the way they say bonus zone, it kind of sounds like, hey, you get a, a fourth zone that you have to work on, which which could be kind of annoying because that's extra work for us, right? Uh, but but then also, even if even if you like kind of have to choose between your guilds, like, okay, we're going to do the bonus zone instead of the main zone, like, you know, like. Hey look, Endor has been revealed. We're gonna do Endor instead of Tatooine or some something like that, you know? Like, like they have to choose our path, you know, for, for each guild. If they if they do something like that, that would be one thing because then they would be replacing work uh, on one with work on the other. However, if they just open another bonus note and they're like, hey, look, there's even more missions you have to do. Like, how, how much time can we spend in this game, CG? That that this, it's an issue that I continuously have. Honestly, so we're, we're gonna revisit that notion in just a minute now the raid reward angst that people are facing is I mean I think it I think it's warranted that we we need to be concerned and watching for this right? I mean We don't know exactly what like they don't have they don't have full answers for us yet on what the raid rewards are gonna be and I, I mean I, I can understand like they're getting rid of the, the The challenge rancor does that mean we're not gonna get the challenge rancor? Uh, rewards in mi mixed in with all of this stuff. If, if you read it, I mean, it sounds like their goal, and th th this is the only thing that they like read highlighted in it. I, I think that they're very, they, they want to state that don't worry, you're gonna get all the old raid gear, and uh, I mean, so that, that probably includes the shards as well. Uh, hopefully, they don't force us to farm uh, Treya and, and the like for, for the new players. Um, I, I don't know what that's gonna look like. They someone asked about the shard shop, uh, the, the shards that you get that you earn, and all, I, all I'm gonna say there's a few different pieces of evidence that I mean there, it's past regimes, you know. So who who knows? It's not something that I can speak of definitively, but I think that there's some indicators that I don't think we have to worry as much about the raid rewards, at least insofar as the gear that we're going to be getting in. Uh, you know, from from the old raids, the new raids. That that's fair game for CG to mess up, honestly. But uh, first off, I think that there's uh, first off, like when they went to the simming aspect of you know being able to sim the the rancor and the tank raid, they defaulted at the maximum number of shards for those characters for Raid Han and General Kenobi possible for the number one raid reward for that. They didn't default to the number one prize reward for in terms of gear, uh, but they did default to 
the the max number of shards that people can get and so i mean i think i think that that's what cg will end up doing honestly if if i had to guess they they said they didn't have any information on it i believe that the person who was answering and didn't have any information but if i had to guess we'll still maintain the same amount of shard shop currency uh, that's obviously not a promise but i think so and then the other thing that i want to point out is one of the biggest ways in the past we've been able to expand the number of resources we have available for our roster advancement is an addition of a new raid. CG has always kept the same raid rewards for the past raids, whether it's through simming or from actually doing it, and then adding in a new raid without diminishing the old raid rewards. And so it's like, hey, if they're raiding, or if they're adding like a fifth raid, which I guess we're getting rid of the challenge one, but like, Traditionally, if they follow the same format and the same mindset, we'll still get all of those new rewards tacked on to the rewards from the previous four. And I, I mean, I don't know for sure if that's what they're doing. It seems like, I mean, they, they had pointed out that they're going to be expanding the amount of gear that we receive and have available. And, you know, just so that we can advance in territory battles over time instead of just taking for frickin' ever. But, I guess we'll see how that ends up being. I, I do think that we're going to end up with more rewards than a lot of the people are, who are naysaying it have been saying. That being said, I don't, I don't really know what to expect from the new raid rewards. And I, it, it does just seem like they've put a lot of thought and effort into into what rewards we are gonna get, whether or not that leads to something satisfying, what remains to be seen. I actually feel like this is one of the things that I'm I'm less worried about, frankly. Like there there are a lot of things, especially like the time consideration, but I just um I think our, I don't, I'm not that worried about our rewards, frankly. Maybe it's just me being naive. We'll, we'll find out uh, eventually. Now, the thing that I don't think I'm... The thing I think I'm not being thoughtful about, thinking about thoughts and words... Um, the, I, the thing that I am worried about, the biggest thing I'm concerned about, is how much time we spend in the game, folks. We, we keep spending more and more and more and more time in the game. Uh, we have, so right now we're kind of forced to participate in the new raid. It's not, it's not the CG, like, we're still gonna get rewards if our guild doesn't finish it and everything, but, I mean, if we want the best rewards, we're gonna have to spend a lot of time. I mean, it's gonna be a little bit, especially at the top end, where they're gonna be, it's like, well, can you get the max number of points? I don't think our guild is gonna need the max points from every single person but we're gonna want that for our own personal good to get all that gear it's like think about trying to get red crate every time for the different galactic challenges for conquest we they want us to get that max thing and they want us to spend as much time as we can so they're letting us re uh, re-roll if we want we're like ah, oh, that wasn't as good of a score as i wanted but I, i'll just try it again if, forever if, if we want to uh they, they've expanded our ability to participate in the raid as well by not shutting it down immediately once we have the winning score they they're like oh well the raid and in two days you have two days to get your max scores so that there's that uh, there's new nodes like I talked about on the territory battles and the territory battles just take more time than they used to because we have to do them every day instead of every day and a half and then also I mean I, I feel like the next step in this and this is just me being gloomy of course is if they expand GAC and territory wars which at the top end is very warranted for how many squads we have we're gonna be like we have too many teams already like it's it's just an embarrassment of wealth if you if you have been playing this game for six years and have been uh, you know spending some money like you you have all the squads and uh, you you can't use them all in GAC it leads leads to some pretty weird situations and same with territory wars it feels like they're going to expand those at some point but that just takes more time to be able to do that unless they restructure things a little bit so uh yeah the spend amount of time that we spend is is it's problematic folks i i don't i don't want to spend more time on this game it, it is already for how how much time i have to spend in this game it's uh, it feels 
I don't know. It feels a little bit chore-ish sometimes. Now, there are seven new announced characters here in this game, folks, in this announcement. They have the two Tuskens, and they have five characters from the from Jedi Fallen Order. I, I wonder if we're going to get an unlock character for the crate Dragon as well for the raid. I don't know, we didn't get a new unlock character for the Pit uh, raid, for the Challenge Rancor, whatever you want to call it, but... Uh, this is a brand new raid, it's not just a remix of it. And, I mean, it would be pretty cool to get, uh, the, what, what's his name, Cobb Vanth or something? Like, he, he was a participant in that. It'd, it'd be pretty cool to get something like him or Cad, old Cad Bane. Someone like that, in, you know, from the Django show. I'd be down. I, I'd be, I think that would be pretty neat. Maybe we'll get that weird mud monster thing that he fights for some reason in that show. I, I don't really know. Now, the last thing I want to introduce to you guys is the idea that all of this stuff, we've got seven new characters coming out and the implications of other characters that we should be gearing a lot like, alongside like Tuscan Shaman, for instance, if we're going to get the other two Tuscans, and if we happen to have Jabba and Lord Vader unlocked, then you have er 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 and Tuscan Raider. If you have, you'll have both of those unlocked for those two GLs. But Tuscan Shaman is not a requirement character. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna gear the two Tuscans and the two, if you already have the old two Tuscans. You like, you may as well gear Tuscan Shaman. And uh, same, like Cal Kestis team kind of seems like it's gonna be split into two the way they talked about it. I mean, at least the, the Night Sister one is gonna go somewhere else. And probably Cal Kestis is gonna go on a diff, on like a Jedi team, whereas the, the Seer Junda team is just gonna be like an unaligned force user squad, it sounds like, so that maybe there'll be three squads, who knows. But, uh, you know, like, like uh, Ahsoka Fulcrum might might be part of it, I thought. I thought it was kind of cool that Pico Burrito from Holotable News Network is actually talking about maybe, maybe, that, maybe that's how we're gonna be able to use Ahsoka Fulcrum in territory battles by using Seer Junda and like an assist attack thing. I, I don't really know, it seems like a cool a cool way to do things, you know. We'd also we also have Admiral Trench and whatever squad he is going to be running, uh, if if anything, Zori Bliss, and they're going to be doing a new announcement in the next two months, like in April. And uh, it just makes me think this is probably uh, their resource drain, folks. Before we start ramping up for something bigger, and uh, I think that the things that we need to be looking at right now, frankly, are Relic Ten for the new raid. I mean, it it seems like that would be very possible that we get Relic Ten. I know that's a dirty word for a lot of people, and we won't I won't talk about my views on Relic 10, Relic 9, etc. right now, I, I do think Relic 10 is very possible, and I don't think it's necessarily going to be the end of the world if we get Relic 10 as a, uh, well, maybe not as a requirement, but just as a, a thing in this game. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to expound on that further right now, because uh, we probably want to be conscientious of your time. However, I do think that we're potentially ramping up for a new Galactic Legend, which, I mean, if we get if we get Endor Leia, it just, just seems like that would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it? To get Endor Leia. And, uh, you know, it's the 40th year anniversary for Return of the Jedi this year. And uh, we need a new, quote unquote, need a new light side galactic legend. And this would be a great way for them to be like, hey, like you just you just had the, the Afra event. You know, everyone's been spending on Inquisition and trying to get ready for the new territory battle and getting all the relics there. And now you have you also have the Calcestis squad, you have the Tuscans to get ready for the crate missions. And also here is a bunch of rebel stuff that you have to work on as well. Uh, you know, for for the for Leia. For the GL Leia or whatever it is. I mean, why, why aren't we getting both? I, I would be surprised if we didn't have both coming up kind of soonish, folks. So, uh, honestly, let me know what your thoughts are. We. This is a, a little bit of a longer one, which is what she said, but. Uh, the, I, uh, there's so much to talk about. This is, um, th there's there's a lot to talk about. And, uh, I mean, I only scratched the surface. This game is continuing to evolve, and, I mean, honestly, it's doing well money-wise. But I think, uh, I think it's a lot of, there's a lot to be positive about, frankly, here, guys. Even if, even if you don't like raids, I think that there's a lot of good things. There's, of course, mixed with a lot of bad things, uh, including... 
including the all, all the various bugs and the no testing of, of stuff. Frustrating, but let me know what your thoughts are, guys. I want to hear what your thoughts are. As long as you remain respectful, of course. <laughs> respectful dialogue, folks. It goes a long way. So thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things, Zareth prevails. And, and it stays respectful, I'm sure. Ha <laughs>